The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the water or in the river Jordan. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with your repentance. And do not think you can say to yourself, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children from Abra for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, there was a fiery old Methodist revival preacher. His name was Peter Cartwright. And he had just arrived in Washington, D.C. And he was famous for telling it just the way it was. Well, he was going to preach the next morning in one of those churches there in Washington. And the elders of the church came to him and, and said, You know, tomorrow, Andrew Jackson is going to be in the congregation. So maybe you could tone it down just a little bit. Maybe you don't have to be quite so offensive. So Sunday came and he got into the pulpit and he says, I understand that the President of the United States, Andrew Jackson, is here with us today. I have been asked to be guarded in my remarks. Andrew Jackson, he said, if he does not repent, will go to... I think you can fill in the blank. Right? Well, the people of the congregation were just appalled that he would use that word. They were just so upset. But immediately following the sermon, Andrew Jackson went up and shook the hand of Peter and said, I just want you to know if I had an army of men like you, I could whip any nation. John the baptizer, he proclaims, I baptize you with water and repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, and I'm not even worthy to carry his sandals, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. It has been said that change is not merely necessary for, to life. Change is life. Uh, an all-consuming fire brings about change. And you know, this is something that John's going to recognize today because it's a phrase that's used to express a critical moment in the stage of a fire. It's when the temperature gets to a certain level that everything in the room that can burn will burst into flames, spreading it immediately. And that term is called the flashpoint. When a home catches on fire, like Pastor Alan Brown, who was over at Hayes United Methodist for many years, did you know that he moved 
to Solomon Lutheran. And a couple months ago, a fire started in his garage. And the flashpoint occurred. And it enveloped the entire home. The fire was so hot that his wife's wheels melted into the driveway. That was a flashpoint. Jean Coteau, the French writer, artist, and film director, he was asked one day, he says, if you could take one thing from your house when it was burning, what would it be? And he replied, well, I'd take the fire. Now, we might think that that would be a practical answer because if he took the fire, perhaps his house wouldn't burn down. But I like to believe that it meant something altogether different. As a writer, as an artist, he knew that fire was passion. And passion was a vital ingredient to the creative process. So if he could have chosen one thing, he would choose fire and passion every time. Passion. That fire in the belly is the catalyst for every one of us who believes in Jesus. It is the fire of passion that changes a life. It seems to me that fire, that passion, well, it starts in our individual commitment to Jesus, which in turn affects your family, and in turn affects every single person you meet. That fire will bring about a complete cleansing of our bodies. And if you follow your passion for God, it will take you to a spiritual flashpoint. Talk about powerful. Did anyone see 60 Minutes last Sunday? There was a wonderful segment they shared a story from 800 years ago about an Ethiopian king who ordered a new capital to be built for Christians. It's 8,000 feet high on a plateau. And there on that plateau, they built 11 churches, each carved out of a single piece of stone. And these are Big, big buildings. And you see, they had to go down into the ground. There wasn't any mortar. There weren't any bricks. There wasn't any lumber. It was all chiseled out of stone. Not a whole lot is known about who built it or when or why. But the faithful of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church say, well, there's no mystery at all. The angels built these structures. The churches were built by angels. Their king, his name was Lalabella, he traveled the 1,600 miles to Jerusalem. And on his way back, he heard that Jerusalem fell to the Islamic conquest. So he ordered a brand new home to be built for Christianity. And to this day, they come by the thousands to this sacred place, walking mile after mile to get there. Because they have a spiritual flashpoint. They are on fire for the Lord. Now I want you to know that God is not going to force this fire upon you. If you desire a watered-down version, well, your flame just might fizzle. But if you seek the same fire that John the Baptist was preaching about, then you need to be willing to catch fire and burn. How does this begin? I want you to know it's a package deal. You cannot have the Holy Spirit within you without fire. Are you letting the Holy Spirit consume you and transform you? If not, you need to let God 
rekindle your very first love. Your love of God. And let that fire in your belly just consume you. Or maybe you're just right where the disciples were on that day of Pentecost, where 120 people gathered. And you know, they were all kind of different people there, but they had one thing in common. They had this incredible expectancy. And the great thing is, they didn't even know what they were expecting. I have to tell you, when you find somebody on fire for the Lord, it is such an incredible experience. It just shows from them. I saw that every time I had the opportunity to be at the Cleveland Clinic. People of such faith and belief and trust in the Lord. It was a remarkable experience. If you will let God's word be the fuel to your passionate fire, then you will ignite. It's not going to be the preacher preaching. It's not going to be the musicians or the music. That's not what's going to set this house on fire. It's when the people of God begin to expect it. Do you expect this place to be alive and vibrant and on fire for the Lord? I invite you to create an atmosphere at your home in this place that will make you combustible. Because you see, it's really all about the substance of your heart. Do not water down your heart. Prepare your heart for God's consuming fire. I want you to know, though, as long as you hold back, as long as you demand to be in charge of your life, you may not be able to be combustible to the point of a spiritual flashpoint. I want you to know that God ignites individuals, which in turn ignites this place. The disciples were set on fire individually, and then there was a church that was on fire. I know that we all love the Lord. We love God. We love Jesus. We love the Holy Spirit. And I want this kind of passion. I want this fire. Maybe our passion for God and our neighbor, maybe it's been curbed by the things of this world. Well, this is the time where we can turn back. Turn back and recognize what's available for each of us. John Wesley once asked about the secret of his ministry. He said, I asked God to set me on fire. And then I just invite the people to watch me burn. There is such great news here. Your hearts are ready. You have been prepared just like Aiden. Washed clean in the waters of baptism. Every one of you have received this incredible gift of the Holy Spirit. Open your heart. Allow your heart to be consumed to the point of a spiritual flashpoint. May it be so for each of us this holiday season. Amen.